Okay, what we're now going to do is look at how to export data from our database as CSV files. We're going to look at how to do this sort of manually and then actually yet yeah, use VBA or Visual Basic for Applications to import this into our database. So the first step, what I've done is I've entered in some dummy data and we're just going to go to the external data tab, click on them. I'm actually just going to I'm going to close these down because it's going to make our lives a little bit easier. I want to export to a text file. Comes up with our options. And what we need to do, browse it, go to the file and folder you want it to be exported to. You always sort of have to go through a few little steps for this. And that's the folder I want. And I need a text file, CSV, so I'm just going to call this quiz.csv. As you can see, that's what I've got highlighted. Export it. I don't want it to take all the formatting. Export, we can see where it's going to come out. Those sort of quote marks around things. I want delimited. And, yep, so we've got all our main sort of information in there. Okay. Next. Often it's useful to include the field names on the first row. It makes it a lot easier for importing at a later date. Next. And finish. I could save the export steps, but I'm not going to. Now I want to do it the same for results and then users as well. So we'll just run through that. Results.csv. Okay. Next, make sure it's delimited. First names on row, comma delimited. Next and finish. And finally for users. Blah 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 blah. blah. Next and finish. So now what we should notice is in my folder here I've got oh that one I need to actually rename to CSV because I forgot to do that quiz results and users.csv. Now what I'm actually going to do here is highlight it all and actually delete everything in it. Now you notice if I delete things from the quiz it only deletes the ones that haven't actually had any results entered because I need to actually del delete the results first then I can delete the quiz and the users. So now I've got no information stored in here at all. My next step is what I actually need to do is create some code that as soon as I load the program up, it's actually going to go and run this. Now, it's a little two-step places just for ease of, ease of use. I'm just going to create a blank form, save it as load form, just because we can add our code easily to this. Makes our life a lot easier. I can go to create, and I want to create a module. Or you can press Alt F11 on the keyboard, and it will, that will bring up the Visual Basic window. So let me just make that nice on the screen. So it's got all that. If I do the Alt F11, note it hasn't actually got our modules, so what I need to do is go up to the module tab, where is it gone, and there we go, insert module, and it creates it. I can re want to rename that. Oh, yeah, sometimes some of the codes don't work as you would normally expect. Ah, there's the name down there. So I'm just going to call this configuration or config. Because that's what we're sort of doing here is we're sort of doing a lot of our sort of setups. I'm going to leave this open compare database there. Now what I want to do is create what's called a subroutine. Subroutines basically don't give us answers. And I'm going to the first one I'm going to create is called load users open bracket, close bracket, and it gives us an end sub. So all the commands for the subroutine need to go between the sub and the end sub. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. First I need to work out where my file is saved. I'm going to create a variable called file path of type string. String is a type of text. And I'm going to give it the location. So at the moment it hasn't got anything stored into it. So if I want to store things in it, I use the equal sign, which we call assigned. So 
we want to assign some information here. There are some built-in commands that we're going to use. So current project dot. So what we're, the current file we're working on. Path where it is. Little ampersand. So that's shift seven on the keyboard. This means append to. So it joins that bit of text that is called current project dot path to whatever I write in there. Whenever we write text, we put it inside sort of a set of double quotes, like shift two on the UK keyboard, slash, because that's what we use to split folders, and the name of the file. Use it in this case, users.csv. Very important you get the spelling correct, otherwise it is not going to work. Now I need to basically create a database. So I'm re oh. why is that not working? It should be working. Dim dear oh as forgot that. So I created a another another variable called DB, which is going to store this current database. Now I need to link up the CSV file. So what I'm going to do here is just put a little comment. Comments start with a little apostrophe. And what I'm doing here is CSV file to a dummy table. So this is what this is going to do here. So you set the DB to the current database. If we get an error, so on an error, we need to do something. We're going to basically resume the next command, which is DB dot table defs dot delete obviously delete remove it and I want to delete this table that is called table import and I'm near if it gets near with that we should go zero so what I'm saying is forget a problem I'm going to delete a ta this table called table import which is going to be my temporary table that I use to import data so db dot table defs dot refresh oh lowercase really important to get the spelling here correct so that will go and update the table now do commands to do something dot I want to transfer text What I'm going to do is just put in a bit of code to tell me the transfer type I want to do. AC link delimited because it's a delimited file that I've got. The table name that I want to import. Table import. Now, if your code get the instructions need to go into the next line. You can put a little underscore and go to the next line, then just sort of tab it in, which starts a bit easier to read. So you're having to scroll left and right. File name is file path. So this is where it's linking to where the basically the file is actually stored with the CSV information in it. As field names equals true. So that's because I've got the field names exported at the top. If I didn't, I'd just put, change that to a false. Now, what we've done there is imported it. Now, what we need to do is basically we're going to refresh the pa table again. Also, if I want to sort of update the table, db dot. So it's all updated. Now we're going to basically copy the files from one or the data from one table, all the records from one table to the other. And this is going from table import through to my users table. Now what we need to do here. 
Okay. We need to do what's called run SQL, so run a SQL command. And this is the code we're going to use. So I want to insert it into. Now, whenever you put in the name of the tables, it's always a good idea to use the square brackets around them. Okay, so I want to insert it into the users, and then I want to select star, meaning everything, from, from the ta import table. And then I want to, so that will import it and copy them. Now I want to, the temporary table, which was called TBL import. So do command dot run SQL, that's what we call there is drop table, and once again inside the square brackets. And close the quotes off. Now what we're going to do is save that as configuration. Now I've got load users, I'm going to have to do a few other bits of loading, so I'm going to create another subroutine called load data. And in there I'm going to just get it to run that command. And obviously I can add extra bits of information in there. I could call this like setup, which will like configure everything and set it all up. So I've got that now. That's all saved. I'm going to just minimize out of that for now. And now my load form, I want to go into design view for this. So design tab, view, design view, click off the bottom, see the properties, event, on load. So when this form loads up, I want to use the code builder and I'm going to tell it to run that command. So if I need to figure out what it is, I can go there. I can need it to go load data. And so that is going to run it as soon as this form loads. Minimize it, close the form, reload it. Okay, it's coming up with a little error. Easy to find types, so I've got this here. DimDB is DAO database. I'm not quite sure what's up there. We'll have a little look at that. It is not defined type, it's not defined. So it shows the yellow where the error is currently. And the next piece, what we'll just try is just that. We just need to stop it, close the form again, load it up. Okay, not sure what's going up here. Let's have a look. Okay, so what we can actually know is we don't even need this line of code. So I'm just going to comment it out. And what we're now going to do, what's going to stop that, minimize it. Load the form again. It's running. It's telling me I'm going to append five rows. It's done it. And if we now open the users table, we've got those five bits of information in there. If I close the load form again, run it. It's going to try me. It's going to try and do it. Then it's going to say it's got some errors because some of them were already in there. If I actually go and delete, say three of these. Then close those off, run the load form again. It'll go, it's going to try and get it, didn't add two, but what it has done is added in the ones that were missing. So it's quite a useful way of basically importing the data, but we really don't want those error messages to pop up. So what we're going to do is disable them temporarily. So what we're going to do here is do a little turn off errors, do command dot, you don't really want to do this too much, because it's, you know, if something does go wrong, you want to sort of have them there, and we're also going to, a bit later on, turn them back on, because once you finish doing these imports, you want to do that. Now, we've got the first one done, now what we need to do is go and modify this, so it does the same for the others. Now, very, very short and simple bit because you're just going to reuse a whole bunch of the code. So copy and paste. Make sure you change the name. Um, let's import load quiz. We're going to
going to add our command up here to load quiz. Now we need to change what file we're going to link it to. And there's a part where we need to link it into what table. We're going to import it into the quiz table. Da -da -da, done. Saved. Repeat one last time. Now what I want to do is load results. Results, remember, you need to have quizzes and users before first. So you need to make sure this one's done last. In terms of the order. Load results and import into results. Save it. Minimize it. Oh, I need, still need to go back to the editing of this. Right at the top, load results. That's important where you have the results after the other two. Minimize it. I've already got stuff in my quiz. Oh, sorry, results table, but nothing's in the other two. So if this all works properly, I'm going to run. Might take a little bit of time. Users done. Results are done. Quizzes are done. No error messages popped up. So that is how we basically import data from our CSV files. Okay. Have a go modifying this, adding in your own, customizing the data as you see fit.